Well, it's 5 a.m. and we're going to Denver. Pick up a welding table. I bought this table through a Chinese company called Kabosu. And I first heard about these guys through a YouTube friend of mine, Phil Vandele. And he actually bought a very similar table and had it shipped to Germany where he lives. He did a really good video on it and I'll link that in the description so you guys can check it out. So this is the closest port of entry, I think they call it, and you're going to need to find out where yours is if you get one of these tables. It's a pretty significant expense to have the table truck directly to your house or shop. I think I was quoted $1,500, so it's a lot cheaper to just drive and pick it up from the port of entry. I'll put it the other way. It only hangs off the back this much the other way. It may be bad in the it's pretty important to remember that this thing is 3,000 pounds. So my welding machine is uh, 2,000 pounds and then whatever the bed weighs and then plus 3,000 pounds. So I'm right at the max limit on my one ton truck for payload, which is right around 5,000 pounds. So you're not going to be able to do this with a Toyota Tacoma. The most difficult thing for me about pulling the trigger on one of these tables was trust, right? You're going to be asked to wire a deposit, whether it's 50% or um, I just wired them 100% right up front because I didn't want to deal with the international wire transfer twice. And I had also talked to him a lot for, for really months before I actually ended up making the purchase and had no reason to feel like he was going to rip me off. In fact, you have to understand, you know, he, he actually gave me a discount on this table because of my YouTube channel because he has a desire to expand to the United States and sell more of these tables to the United States. So really when you think about it, it's pretty counterproductive. If he was to rip somebody off for one table in the long run, that would really just hurt his business. It's not, and it's not something that I felt like he was trying to do. You know, I can't attest to any of the other Chinese welding table manufacturers, but the customer service that I, I had with Hiri was his name, was better than most customer service that I get from American companies nowadays. So if there's anything that I learned from this whole process is how important a good customs broker is. I got really lucky and I found a company, Bluebird Customs, and the lady's name was Emily. And she did a great job. There's a lot of paperwork and EIN numbers, social security numbers, uh, there's fees and signatures and all kinds of things that need to be filed within a certain time frame. And if any of that doesn't line up, you're not going to be able to pick up your table. Uh, Emily, I asked Emily if I could recommend her on my channel and she said yes. So I'm going to put her information in the description and feel free to ask me any questions that you have. So I know a lot of you guys are going to ask about price, and I'm not going to tell you, but not because it's a secret. Uh, Kiri's prices are all set list. He's got a price list and everything, and the way you get a hold of him is send him a DM on Instagram, or I'll put his email in the description, and he'll probably have a price list to you by the end of the day. But the reason I'm not going to tell you is because it's really dependent on what you get. You know, there's 
a million different combinations and packages, you know, whether it's plasma nitride like this one, um, that would be more expensive than if you get one that isn't hardened. Uh, how much clamps, how much clamping and fixtures you get with it. There's just so many variables that even if I told you a price, it probably won't be accurate. But one thing I can tell you from my research is basically after customs fees and what you pay Cavoso, you're looking about 50% ish for what you'd have to pay in the United States for a comparable table setup. So the table and the outriggers and all the steel that makes up the table is basically 7 8 15 16 inch thick. So it's, it's metric, but uh, that's what it translates to. And it's super heavy. Even these little legs, they don't look that heavy, but they're, they're definitely too heavy to manage by yourself. common question I get asked is what what type of saw should I get a bandsaw or one of these dry cut chop saws and the simple answer is both if only one of the two is in the budget I'd recommend one of these evolution dry cut chop saws they actually sent this one to me and gave me a discount code that I'll put in the description I think it's for five percent off and I've always had these and I've actually had Makita before this one and I like the Evolution one a lot better it's got a bigger blade and it's just a lot more solid more steel parts than plastic
These clamps here on the left, these are the ones that came with the table. And I'm actually really happy and impressed with the, uh, the quality of them. This is cast iron or some kind of cast steel. It's magnetic and it's really sturdy and strong. And you have the option to slide this uh, knurled ring to control the height. This one's a little bit different, same kind of idea, but this one you can actually, you have another axis rotation, you can actually spin this around. These ones here that you see, I didn't buy these because I wasn't happy with these. I actually really like these, there's nothing wrong with them. The thing is, I just wanted to see what was available in the US for 28 millimeter fixture clamps because it's not very practical to order from a Chinese company and have to deal with tariffs and you know all the fees and everything just to get a couple clamps. And these are Bessie brand. I also like these just for speed's sake. They're really fast. But I guess my point is it's nice because these this 28 millimeter hole pattern is standardized enough that you can still get tooling for this in the US. I got these from MRM Machine and Tool. You know, it only took a couple days to get here, and it was a good company to work work with. I don't make new ones of these every time I do a handrail. These are standard sizes. This is half inch, so this elevates it half inch off the table, and this side is three quarter, which is what we need.
These things are all cast iron. And honestly, the casting is just perfect. It's, these things are really nice. You got machine on three sides. They're just really nice. Well, I will say, I'm gonna have to come out with a better way than this because these things aren't light. I had to freehand these miters with a cutoff wheel because my saw didn't miter far enough. And you can see my cut is a little bit off here, but it's really nice because you don't have to figure out where this error occurs with this table because everything is square and everything's against the clamps. So I know just one of these two miters were wrong by a little bit. So I pulled the diagonal and to this point right here is exactly where it's supposed to be. So I'll just fill this little, this little gap here with weld, grind it smooth and nobody will ever know. You can't just use spacers and go all the way down, you know, put a spacer here, spacer here, spacer here, and expect it to be accurate because uh, hot rolled steel is just not that accurate. And if you think about it, the 30 second off here times one, two, three, four, five, however many you got, you end up being a long ways off down there. So I'll do two or three with the spacers and then periodically I'll measure from the top rail to the picket to the baluster to uh, make sure I'm in the right spot. This, uh, this gate is temporary just until they get an inspection and they're gonna change it. So we're just using super cheap hardware store latch. Mm -hmm. 